with the Tacoma, Washington office. I know we all have a lot to get through, so I'll, I'll try to make this quick. Uh, quick crash course on Washington State for those that do not know it. We're often referred to as the Puget Sound region, which essentially encompasses western Washington specifically, and we're a port-driven market. We have two major ports, Seattle and Tacoma. So if you look at the bulk of the industrial activity, it happens there in between the port of Tacoma and the port of Seattle. Everyone knows Seattle, Tacoma is about 35 miles south of Seattle. And so if you look at our freeway system and the industrial market that stretches between there, that is really our, our bread and butter. But then as the years have gone on, we stretch up and down the I-5 corridor, and that's where a lot of our new construction and growth outside of the call it main corridor has occurred. So obviously you can see a lot of the numbers up here. No surprise, vacancy has ticked up this year. We were hanging out around 3% vacant there for a couple years. Uh, including in 2022, and our, our demand generally on the tenant side has started to slow a little bit. I would argue it's still pretty healthy. The numbers are interesting, right? There's always the devil in the details. And if you look at even just, I mean, we were, we're all hearing about sublease space flooding the market. We, we've heard the numbers there. We've tripled in the amount of sublease, and it's, it's real, but it hasn't had a arguably huge impact on our market, in my opinion, as far as you know, rates and other metrics that are affecting the deals that we're getting done. Rates are holding. We've had a huge flight to quality, and, and I don't think that's unique to Seattle either, but that is where you're seeing this flip in absorption for the most part, and I'll show you on the next slide. But as tenants have been going to quality, those rates are holding, if not growing. And so then what's happening is on the back end, a lot of that space isn't necessarily getting filled, um, a lot of the class B, class C buildings. So that's kind of what I'm getting at here. And so if you look at our development pipeline, probably historically coming out of the GFC, whenever, you know, pick your year that things ramped back up, whether that's 14, 15, 16, when a lot of more institutional capital started coming in and spec development started up again, we were probably delivering anywhere from five to 10 million square feet or, or more on an annual basis, which by all measures is, is pretty good. Obviously nothing compared to what we've seen in Dallas and Phoenix and Vegas. We're super land constrained in Seattle because we have the water to the west, mountains to the east, and so all we can really do is grow north and south, and we're and consequently, I mean, we're, we're pretty picked over. So not a ton of opportunity for development, but we always seem to make it work. But like I mentioned before, I mean, the, the big thing that I, I would note here is you can see in 2022, we had awesome absorption, had a bunch of construction deliveries, and most of them got absorbed or absorbed shortly after that year. Then fast forward to this year, and we have negative absorption. And really, a lot of that comes down to what I was saying is really tenants trading space. So the number that I've been throwing out to a lot of my clients that I think is kind of interesting is, you know, backtrack 18 months ago, if you were representing a tenant in the market, looking for a big box space, call it over 100,000 feet, you might have five to maybe 10 realistic options and they would go quick, you had to compete, you, you didn't have much leverage as the broker representing the tenant. Fast forward to today, you might have anywhere from, you know, 40 to 60 plus options. So, I mean, it's, it's ticked up pretty dramatically, but a lot of those options are class B products. They might be functionally obsolescent in some form or fashion. So again, devil's in the details, but all things considered, I, I'd argue the market's still in a pretty healthy spot at the moment. We're, just, we're not running on rocket fuel anymore. That's, that's the reality. So Boeing is probably one of our bigger employers. And so we've always had a pretty healthy aerospace presence. And then between the two ports, we're a very heavy 3PL market. I mean, if you use the 80-20 rule, we're probably 80% distribution in our market. And those are all those containers coming in through the ports. TEUs are down at literally every port in the country, I think, except for maybe Savannah or Houston or one of those two, but. Houston. Houston, there you go. So in any event, that's having its impact on all of our 3PLs and a lot of our distributors sizes. So under 50,000 is still pretty robust activity wise and pretty tough to find space. Even under 100,000 is tough. We're, we're, we're kind of seeing the tweener size, which didn't used to be the tweener size, but 100 to call it 250 is where we're seeing a lot of that vacancy sitting out there. And then Big Box is still doing actually remarkably well. Uh, you look at Boeing, for example, they've, they've kind of been the shining star for the past six months. Just in the past six months alone, they've leased up almost 2 million square feet in about three, three different projects, five buildings. So that alone is, has been very healthy when you look at our market on a stat sheet, but 
they're, they're kind of a one-off, right? But then you have, you have big tenants like Pepsi out there in the market for a million square feet in Seattle right now. We actually saw a proposal from Amazon for a million square feet. That's the first Amazon proposal we've seen in the better part of whatever, you know, two, two and a half years. So we'll see if that continues. Obviously, they've been on the sidelines for a while, but we're a huge player in every market, right? So moving on, given the report driven, I mean, obviously, if container volumes could pick up. That would probably help a lot of our tenants and a lot of the volume and movement in our market. It seems that in talking with all my clients, especially the 3PLs, that inventory in their warehouse is just sitting right now. It's not turning the consumer spending less dollars. Again, you guys all probably know this. We're seeing it in the news every day, but that's obviously impacting the need for space, planning for future, and so a lot of tenants are still just trying to kind of get used to this new normal and figure it out. We don't really have anything in our market that I believe would be a huge detriment factor to it beyond something at a macro level beyond um, like, but, but what happened when those 737s crashed, that actually did have a, a pretty dramatic impact on our market because we're so Boeing heavy and we're also a lot of Boeing subcontractors heavy. So as soon as Boeing was making the news and having those issues, well, they stopped doing business while their subcontractors basically had pause on everything. And while Boeing is big enough to surprise to survive, a lot of those small subs have trouble with that, right? So. We're seemingly long past that. Boeing's up again and thriving. Um, so, you know, short of something else disastrous like that happening, I don't, I don't see a, a huge red flag behind our back at the moment. Our market is, I, I mentioned to you, the two ports. In between the ports, we refer to that area as the Kent Valley. From an institutional level, that's always kind of been the highest level of peak interest in investing. Close in CBD, the infill market, always been really interesting, but that market's actually probably I would argue that submarket's probably taken the biggest hit because it's a lot of older, antiquated products. So tenants have made the flights of quality, like I mentioned a couple times now. So that's been really interesting to watch. And then really Pierce County, which is where the Port of Tacoma is located. That's been one of the few areas where you can find sizable land to do development. And so naturally, Class A is getting built there. Tenants are flocking into Class A. I mentioned how we're land, you know, I talked about most of this. But the big thing about Washington that I would say is, you know, you always hear about Seattle being a tech city, much like San Francisco and Silicon Valley and whatnot. Amazon, Microsoft, I mean, pick all your big companies. They have a, a presence there. We're all watching how they're changing their office space needs and kind of how they operate as a company, but they're, they're all still there. They have massive swaths of office space still, and they also have a lot of tech and R&D and industrial space too. So those are big drivers of our market. They're high paying jobs. So we have high median salary. We have people wanting to move to Washington State. Our population is still growing pretty dramatically. And we also have a, a pretty pretty sizable housing shortage and affordability crisis on the residential side of things. So there's a lot of barriers that we're going up against here in Washington, but it's in, in the grand scheme of things as far as the commercial and the industrial market specifically, it's, it's helping us stay healthy. So I'm pretty bullish at the moment on where things are going. I think we're all gonna have to hang tight and ride this thing out for a little bit. Big question is how long, right? That's all I got.